everyone welcome to the last part of this um series it's been quite a momentous series i think actually quite long um and well done if you've colored along and uh, and got through all this all these little bits and bobs it's uh, it's been fun i think right let's come in a little bit closer and start some of these items on this bottom shelf so we've mainly got a lot of bags so I've got a suitcase first. I'm just going to grab a blue and get... Oh no, can't do blue. <laughs> let's do dark brown for this one. And we've got brown here. Right, let's have a proper think. What colour shall we do it? Let's do it green. There we go. <laughs> 57. We've got green here, I know, but this is a very different green. So let's... Uh... I'm just going to colour it all in the same colour, I think, to start with. And then I'm going to uh, think about where to make it lighter and darker. So yeah, I was. someone asked me to do this page and my heart sunk. I was like, oh no, it's such a hard page. But I've had such fun colouring it. And it was not like I'm not going to colour it. Obviously, uh, well, I say obviously, I always finish all of Johanna's books before her next one comes out. So uh, it's not like I wasn't going to do it. I'm going to use... No, that's that colour. I'm going to use number 38 to do a few darker bits. And I'm thinking maybe this little band here, maybe that's a bit darker. I should do the hand or two. There we go. And now we've got this sort of, um, hmm, I don't know what to call it, a tashi case, maybe. That's what my brain wants to call it. I don't really know what it is. <coughs> Sorry, I'm still coughing, number 77. I've had my coffee. <coughs> I still got a bit of a frog in my throat. I'm going to again colour it all with a just an even bit to start with. And then put a few darker areas here and there. I'm thinking this is a sort of business bag. I'm thinking here, John has drawn some little lines in here, so I'm going to use that as a guidance for this bit being a bit darker. I think it's sort of um, pushed in a bit, if that makes any sense. I'm thinking maybe a little bit under the flap. There, let's do the handle a bit darker. There we go. Now this little clasp, I'm thinking, oops, we'll do in a sort of goldish colour. Number 16. And I'll just do it like that. And then we've got our label. Um, let's do um, let's do an orange label. I don't know why. Number forty-two. Just grabbing. Now, is this a parcel wrapped up to go to the post office, or is it a present? Let's do it a jolly colour. Let's do it a nice sort of pink. Actually, I don't know what colour that is. Twenty-three. I think it's called red, but I think it's quite a pinky colour. Let's see what it's called. Oh, it's Bordeaux, and it's called, so I suppose that is a pinky colour. And as if it's sort of gift wrap. Now I'm thinking this side will probably be a little bit darker, so I'm just going to put another layer down on there going to tidy that up and then put a little bit of shadow underneath these bits where it's folded. I don't know how visible that is but I know it's there. And now number 10 for our bit of tape. I'm actually going to use that for the tape on this bit too. Fancy sticking that on the screen. And on this bit. Uh, yeah, I think that's all the tape. 
Right, and the label, we do the more different colours, don't we? Let's do, a, let's do one in 73. Really light. There we go. Right, television. I'm thinking dark grey. Whoops, the uh, main set. So, number eight. It looks quite an old-fashioned television, doesn't it? I don't know about you, but our telly doesn't have any buttons on it at all. I'm going to colour over these because they're small and I'll colour them in black. And this bit, with this be that's where the sound comes out. Although I've had more old-fashioned tellies than that growing up. It's got a remote control. Didn't have those when we were little. I'm going to grab the black and do some of the details. Number nine. I'm going to make the remote control black. A little bit lighter on the top. Just going to colour those buttons in. Um, let's colour this bit a bit darker. Yeah, I remember having a TV with just a dial on the front of it and you had to tune in the channels. I tell my boys, they'd laugh. I fed about a hundred when I tell them. <laughs> but it was an old telly and it's black and white as well. <laughs> when I was um, born we only had a black and white TV so I... My grandfather had a black and white TV for a lot longer than us. He um he didn't have lots of money, he was a pensioner. I'm gonna use the grey to do bits on the screen. Just sort of bits of here and there to make it like it's catching the light. And then we'll do this big label. Hmm, maybe it's a big oh, it can't be a big poster because it's stuck on with cellar tape. Let's use this blue, number 30. But yeah, he used to have the, uh, yeah, and TVs used to be enormous, not just, I mean, the screens weren't the biggest bit. It was the, the whole box was so big compared to what we have these days. It's quite fascinating, I think. Now I'm going to move across a little bit. We have this sort of wooden crate. <clears throat> I'm going to do this in a dark brown because of our background. So number 76. And again, I'm just going to do a light layer all over and then add some darker bits. I realise we've got these little screws or tacks or whatever they might be. They're very small, so I'm colouring over them. Now, I'm just having a think about this. So this piece going across here will probably have a shadow under it. It might, it's a little bit further back. I think we'll do a little bit above it too, like that. I think the top would be lighter, but there'd be a shadow from the crystal ball. I'm going to do this bit a little bit darker than the top. I'm just putting another little layer on. There we go. Now you could even put some lines on like this to look a bit more like wood grain. Don't know which direction to put those that way. There we go. Might just end up looking a bit scribbly. I don't know, but I'm happy with it. Um, and the label, mm, you know, what should we use? What would you do? Maybe this one. Number two. There we go. Now we've done a crystal ball already. 
and I did it in sort of pink and purple I think. I sort of like that idea really. We could do it yellow like it's shining like it's a light but I think that's a bit hmm, not too interesting. I think I'll do pink and purple again. We'll use 62 and do a few areas like that and then spread out like this. So I've done a darker bit in the middle and then I'm just fading it out. And then I'm going to grab the pink, <clears throat> number 20, and do these areas. And just sort of try and blend it in to the purple a bit. Now if you wanted you could get some, I haven't got mine in here, um, some um, metallic pens and cut go over those dots and make all the magic. Um, I'm going to do the stars but I'm just going to do them in 11 and hope they might just show up a little bit. Like that. But, um, it's a bit messy around there. I'm just going to get my number 73 pencil and tidy up this bit. See if it looks messy colour over it a bit in a slightly different direction you can just make it look a little bit tidier there we go now we've got the base part what did we do on our last one I'm just trying to see it we did it silver Maybe we'll do it metallic blue, just so it's a bit different. If I can pull off a metallic blue, I'll give it a go. 33. So I'm thinking this bottom piece first is easiest. Just leave a white gap in the middle. And then this one, just fade it to the middle. And then this one, I'm going to do a darker bit here underneath. And then the tips and leave the shine in the middle. Don't know, I, that's, that's me, I'm okay with that. Now we've got our cases, let's move them into the centre a bit more. Just bear with me, there we go. Now, they're all different, aren't they? So let's start with the blue one, number 37. I'm gonna do most of it in just a plain blue and then do some of those little, the edging, I'm thinking in a different colour. I'm doing this front slightly darker than the top. I would think the top would be more likely to catch the light and uh, might look lighter, although of course we've got the shelf above it. So that sort of plays with it and makes it a bit different. but. I'm just uh, doing the best I can really with light and shade, keeping it simple for me. Cause, mm, there we go. And I'm going to do the darker blue. This isn't massively darker, 35, for the trim. So we've got this piece at the back. And because I'm trying to layer it up a bit more as well, it should look a, you should be able to see that it's darker. If you prefer, you can go with a darker, even darker one. I'm going to do the clasp in this colour. Usually I do them as a sort of metallic, but I don't know why it couldn't be this colour. Just for a change. I'm actually going to make it solid, as if it's plastic. There we go. So that one looks a bit samey, um, you know, just a bit different. Um, the next one we'll do in purple, I think, why not, let's have a purple bag. Number six, I'll do a lightish purple top and then a little bit darker on the front like we did with the last one. Basically you just have to put, layer it up a little bit more 
at it a bit darker. It's a nice colour suitcase, isn't it? Mine's black. It's very boring. And, uh, you know, it's sometimes good to have a bright colour so that when you're grabbing it off the carousel at the airport, you can, um, you can spot it easily. But... Uh, what well, my mum had a good tip to uh, tie a coloured ribbon to the handle so that your case stands out more as long as you remember what colour your ribbon is <laughs> yeah that's quite striking isn't it I think we'll make the clasps in a dark sort of silvery colour so we'll go for eight and I'm going to try and make them darker top and bottom and leave a bit of white shine as if uh, hopefully it gives the impression that they're a bit silvery. Same on this bit. The handle though. Hmm. Maybe more solid. Like that. I haven't done the labels. I'm going to do 49 for this one. And then I'm going to leave the next until I've done the case. I think I'm going to do this case orange. I know it's a bit odd, but I don't think I've done an orange case. Number four. I think I'll leave that edge, do it a different colour. Maybe just a darker orange. I'm pressing quite hard because I want it to show as orange so it stands out from that background. Orange can be a little bit pale. So I'm just up and down, layering it up. Oh, that's a train. Right, and then we'll use a darker orange, number up oh, 24. So again, a little bit lighter here, and then darker on the front. And I'll also do this bit. And maybe that bit too. Why not? And the handle. And we've got these two labels to do. I'm going to grab a red, number 29, this one. And then for that one, uh, blue, number 63. There we go. Now let's move ourselves along for our last bit. Now we've got our doll's house, which is gorgeous. Going to do the roof first in number eight. Now for roofs, for this bit, I should just do it quite dark. But what I tend to do for roof tiles is start dark and get lighter. And then I think it works quite well. Of course you might want to do this a brighter colour as it's a doll's house. But I just automatically reach for grey because most roofs here are grey. No, that's not true in all countries. Some places have a lot of red roofs. Our roofs are most definitely grey here in our street. But uh, that's okay. You can even leave a little bit of white like I accidentally did there to make them look shiny. This is exactly the same way that Johanna draws fish scales and I colour them in the same way as this. <laughs> Not normally in grey though. <laughs> normally in some nice colour. Time. 
and ten past nine. It used to be a little rhyme. Oh, I won't repeat it, it's a bit rude. What's the time, half past nine? Hang your something on the line. My grandfather was quite naughty, he used to sing this. You might know it. If you do, don't put it in the comments. <laughs> I don't want to get told off by YouTube for naughtiness. It's not that naughty, but even so. <laughs> you have to Google it if you want to or find out what it is. It's not naughty enough to uh, be a problem. It'll get through safe search, etc. Oh, I do like a little doll's house. My um, ex-sister-in-law bought one for her daughter, my niece, and uh, it was a Cindy one, which she, she'd had one. I don't know if she had one like it or if she'd always wanted one when she was little. I remember having a few Cindy things myself. Um, I'm just trying to think, decide on the colour of the wall, and I'm actually going to use this pink, I think it'd be rather nice, 25. And... Uh, yeah, so I never had the Cindy house, which is lucky because it's huge. But um, I had the bed and wardrobe with coat hangers. And was there a dressing table or did I dream that? I don't know. Um, which was rather fun. And uh, But then I got a slightly smaller size doll. Same sort of similar to a Cindy. Cindy, by the way, for those in America, is a UK Barbie equivalent. So she was quite similar, but much cheaper than a Barbie. Barbies aren't so expensive these days. Anyway. Um, and uh, I'm just going to even that up a bit. Make it a bit darker, actually. I think it's nice for the pink to stand out a bit. Particularly on the front. Um... And then I got a smaller doll. I have a feeling it was called Sarah Louise. And I had a horse for her. And I think a sitting room furniture. I don't think I had a bed though. I think she used Cindy's bed, even though it's far too big. Because, you know, why not? They couldn't afford all the furniture. Number 23. I used to sometimes ask for it for birthdays and Christmases or spend a bit of pocket money on it. But it was really expensive still. I think when you're a kid, everything is expensive. You've never got any money. And we, yeah, we weren't well off when I was little. I still had lots of stuff. I was very lucky. I had plenty. We always had food. We always had clothes. It was just toys we didn't have millions of. I mean, still had loads, just not the ones they advertised on the telly, right, <laughs> number one, that you all see and want, and your friends have. And then if you eventually get them, or you buy them for your children, you realise how rubbish they were, and you're glad you didn't have them. <laughs> right. We've got another suitcase here. Um, we haven't done a lot of green, so let's do a green one. We've done a green one over the other end, but I don't think it matters. Number 50, and we'll do, again, we'll sort of just do the whole of it in green. I'm thinking the top will definitely be a bit lighter, so I'm going to go a little bit darker down here. Miss out some of this for different colours. I'm thinking this bit might be like a wrap around it. Sometimes people sort of put an elastic or something tied around their bag to keep it closed, so... That's, I'm going to leave that. Now this bit's going to be even darker here, so I'm going to put even more layers on. Because there'd be some sort of shadow from this um, piece of furniture, storage unit, whatever it might be. And I'm going to use a darker green, number 52. For this bit, I'm going to use it lightly. And then do those bits darker. I think it's fun. And the handle. Maybe this.
this would be plastic, so it might be shiny. That's what I'm thinking, so I'm leaving a bit of a tiny bit of white like that, and I'm going to do that in grey. Number 80. Now what's this? It just caught my eye. Something in the framed picture, maybe with a mount. Right, so what we'll do, we need a different colour. Let's do the frame in 61. It's very bright, but we haven't used it yet. And then the mount, maybe in here, in 20. I'm wondering whether it's supposed to be a mirror, but I think I'm just going to colour the inside in this pale 62, just a really light bit. And then that room in a slightly darker bit. Now I'm just checking to see if I've done it. Did I colour in that label or is that white? No, that is coloured in. Okay. We haven't done that label on that bag though. That there. I'm just going to do that in number three in this blue. Now I'm going to try and come out and show you. So what have we done today? Oops. We've done this bottom bit. But we are going to do the, um, the background in a bit of pastel. I'm just going to need to put my pencils away and make room for my pastels. come out a bit more so we can see the whole double page Ooh, it only just fits in shot so there it is before pastel but I'm now going to grab my soft pastels now these are Mungio ones Ugh. now I've got to think about a colour now I'm thinking if I pick a colour that I don't have a pencil of, then it won't sort of mould into anything else. So I'm having a look. Um, I'm just grabbing a, um, a pad to put it on with. I don't want anything too dark. We could try this cream, but I'm not convinced it's going to show up. There are these sort of golds we could do. This, that's a very bright colour. There are some pinks. The greens got this green here might work um, or a light blue that I know that purple's really pale or we could go for a grey um, I'm teetering towards this green um, or golds I think I might do that colour there okay the sort of goldy brown that's what I'm going to do I'll put this at the side now what I do I'll just show you oops before I put it away I just take this pad this is a washable makeup pad you can use a non-washable one and wipe it across the pastel like that until I've got some on and then I start rubbing it on the page hold the page carefully down so you don't um, crumple or crease or tear it by mistake and just rub on your colour like that. You need to try and get into every nook and cranny around each item. Like this dog, he's got white eyes so I've got to be really careful that I don't go into his eyes and make them yellow. And this trumpet's got white bits on it. So it's going to be a bit tricky getting in there now you can use um, smaller applicators to make it slightly easier but uh, I 
don't find they're that much better than using a big one like this. So it's going to take a little while to get through the whole page, but I'm going to do it on camera so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just gently rubbing. Now it's not even, but I'm not going to worry too much about that either. I think sometimes it looks better when it's not even. Maybe that's just my own thought. Um, but I think it adds a bit of character somehow. It might end up making our room look a bit old, you know, and I think maybe that, like the paintwork hasn't been done for a while. Maybe that's okay. It makes it look a bit more mysterious, like it's sort of old treasures. Or maybe I'm just making an excuse for my lack of talent at putting pastel on paper. <laughs> You could do this with pencil. Now, there isn't a, a Ergosoft pencil this colour. But I'm sure you could find a pencil this colour or use a different colour. Um, if you are doing it in pencil, I would use a different pencil set to the one you've used so that there's no way you can use a colour that's similar to what you've already used. If that makes sense. This is probably most similar to 61. <coughs> But because it's blotchy and uneven, it doesn't look like it. Go around those ballet shoes a bit more. You can see how much more quick, um, quickly it goes down than pencil, which is uh, a big advantage of, um, of pastels. The reason a lot of people like them, me included, and uh, yeah, you can get a background done in minutes rather than days. <laughs> I have spent days doing backgrounds in pencil before. So uh, when I was a bit slower and didn't have all day to colour and uh, things like that. But even so, it's uh, quite nice having it easy peasy. Oops, that's my elbow. <laughs> Trying to make sure I get it all done in all the little gaps. There's one there. There we go. As I say, you don't need to necessarily get it even, which I'm not doing, but you just need to make sure you sort of fill it all in, really. Okay, I'm going to move on to this page. Now, one thing with pastel is it shows up fingerprints. So I'm very much avoiding touching it once I put it down. So I'm putting my hand on, on bits that I've coloured in pencil rather than bits that are going to have pastel on. Which is much better. And, uh, but you do need to hold the page or else, because you're rubbing, you can make it scrunch up a little bit. So uh, you want to look after your paper, make sure it stays nice and flat. Now this one has got a lot less to do because we're only going around the edge, aren't we? Now you might want to have done the floor in a different colour, which would be a little more realistic. It's unlikely the floor and the walls would be painted the same colour, but I have took the decision to keep them the same colour. Do a little bit around our gramophone there. But, um, oops, knocked it a little bit. It's, uh, it's up to you. Sometimes when I'm doing a pastel background, I do the corners and edges a little bit darker than the centre. But for this page, I'm not going to worry because we've got all our little detail. Don't really need to worry about that. And this page, most of the pastel is on the outside anyway. Just trying to even it out. Missed out that bit between there. Just going back through it really, making sure I've done 
all the little gaps in between things. Now, if you've used a smudgy brand of pencil, you'll find that it'll come off on the cloth and you might smudge it around a bit. So you need to be a little bit more careful. I've done it before with smudgy pencil and purposely smudged it around and it's had a different sort of effect altogether. But uh, it just depends what, you, uh, what you're after really. I'm going to remove these bits of paper now. Because I think the table frames... Oops, sorry for all the noise. I think the table frames it better than the white paper because of it being a bit darker. But there it is all finished. So that's rather um, rather a success, I think. I'm feeling rather pleased about that. Um, well done to everyone who's also finished it or even just watched all the videos because that's been quite a feat in itself. But uh, thank you again. Have a really lovely day and happy colouring.